Hi everyone, I hope you guys are doing fine, yeah? So, uh, this week is the 14th week, which is the last week of lectures for your semester. Since we have finished with our syllabus, I'm going to just do a recap on everything that is necessary for the subject PAD 370, uh, Introduction to Public Financial Administration. Hopefully with all the lessons that you have learned, you are now understand the basic components and also procedures of public financial administration. Let's start with the recap now, yeah? Okay class, let us start with topic 1 or chapter 1 entitled Introduction to Public Financial Administration. So this is the syllabus content for chapter 1. So all the topics that you have to remember is the definition of course, scope and components of public financial administration, the objectives and the significance itself, the distinction between public and private sector means the difference between public and private sector and also principal and legal framework. So among all these topics, uh, in order for you to understand about public financial administration law, the things that you need to highlight, I think, uh, the most important part is uh, the definition itself. Um, the main components, of course, because the main components comprise of all the components that you are, uh, you are already uh, studied for the whole semester. Yeah? And then there's a distinction between public and private sector. Okay, so jump to the these are all the main components of public financial administration, you know, right? Tax administration, budgeting, procurement or supply, accounting, auditing, treasury or uh, treasury that is handled by Ministry of Okay, we look back at the definition of public financial administration. So this is the administration's um, public financial administration definition. You have to remember yeah, in order for you to understand and also memorize the definition itself, you need to find certain keywords so that you can understand it well. Yeah? For example, for um, public financial administration based on scholars, it is a process of usage of fund, a process of making decisions and also a technique yeah, that is um, handled by the government to manage the resources. So as you can see here, I have highlighted three, uh, three terms that can be used as your keywords. Usage of fund, process of making decisions and also the technique. So that's all okay. you already learned about it. Main components as well. And then the, the difference between public, public financial and also private financial administration. Okay. So in terms of um, public and also private sector, we have already learned that there are six main criteria that we can see in order for us to make the comparison. Okay. The first one is uh, in terms of objectives, second, accountability, decision making, benefits, beneficiaries means who get the benefits, levels of control and also scope of functions. Yeah? Okay. Um, for objective, uh, for public, public sector, uh, the objective is to, to provide public service to citizens regardless of their financial return resulting from their services. But for private uh, sector, it is driven by profit, yeah, the objective. And then accountability for public financial admin, a variety of institutions, the highest level of authority is to citizen. And then meanwhile, for private one, its customers and shareholders are in charge of the accountability. Next one, decision making. For public financial admin, it's controlled by elected politicians. Policy decisions is based on political power, uh, political party power, and through taxation. Uh, meanwhile, for private financial admin, decisions are influenced by market factor of demand and supply. Having a choice whether to spend or what to spend. So, uh, decision making, uh, who 
get the benefit. So for public financial administration or the government, it is uh, it gives the benefit to large segment of citizen. Meanwhile, for private sector or private financial administration, it needs of its customers and shareholders. Yeah. Okay, levels of control by public financial admin. Various level of control and the highest level of control is parliament as the supreme legislative institution. Meanwhile, for private financial admin, it is controlled by board of directors of all aspects. In small organization, one person will control all aspects. And in scope of functions, for public financial admin, it, it is made of a huge number of civil servants, includes all federal, state, local, authority and statutory bodies, employees. Functions are huge and right here, but for private financial admin, a reduced number of staff, functions are specified to their area. So you can see the example over there is Air Asia. Yeah? So these are the main important or the main or the important topics that you can highlight at topic one. Okay class, let's move on to the second topic or chapter which is public sector budget or budgeting system. So the syllabus uh, uh, is the definition of public budget. Of course, you need to understand what is the meaning of public budget in order to understand the rest of the components. Yeah? The purposes or roles of public budget, characteristics of budget, principles of budgeting, and components of public budget. And also, the very important one, budgeting system in Malaysia. So for me, for second chapter, you need Purposes of or roles of public budget and also the components of public budget. Let's get budget system in Malaysia. Let's see the definition. Okay, in general, our budgeting refers to a statement of revenue and expenditure of government for the future. Yeah? So these are two components of budgeting that is very important for you to memorize, understand, whatever it is. Please remember that budgeting is all about uh, the explanation of revenue and also expenditure of government, yeah? uh, which are the components of budgeting itself. Okay? So please remember the keyword. It is, uh, it is uh, a statement of revenue and expenditure of government for the future. It is also a planning and management tool used for national economy purposes. As long as you have the revenue and expenditure insight, you will uh, get to elaborate it better. Yeah? And then the roles. The roles of it. It is a method of implementing government's policies, also a method of legal controlling and monitoring sources of information for the public, fiscal policy instrument, economic stability, and also agency management. Okay, let's take a look at the components. development expenditure. I know that you guys already understand this kind of expenditure very well because you apply this in your assignments, right? Your budget proposal. Alright class, as for budgeting system in Malaysia, we all know that uh, the main budgeting system that you need to highlight are Program Performance Budgeting System, Modified Budgeting System, and also our Based budgeting system or known as OBS. Yeah? So let's take a look at uh, the BBS numbers. The summary of the to identify objectives, program planning, and structuring, the 
developing performance indicators performance evaluation it is about developing performance indicator so you will have So MBS is actually a combination of PPBS with non -hinder. So this is what it's all about. Okay. So modified budget system or MBS is uh, about input, the process um, related to the process related to input and output, and then the impact. There are only one, two, three, four. Yeah. Meanwhile, for OBBS, it's a uh, advanced one uh, an advanced uh, an advanced system uh, or an improved system from MBS so this is the chart okay so input the process output outcome and impact so this is the the new one yeah? so outcome based budgeting system is all about the outcome I bet you all already understand this very well as well because you guys already did this for task 2, right? Document system and uh, well analyze using the RDPS system or the outcome based budgeting system. Next one, chapter 3. Okay, chapter 3 of chapter 3 is about public budget also. This is one of the components of the public budget. It is the public budget. So this is the syllabus component. The whole thing is all about taxation and also the revenue. The two main topics in public revenue. Or income. So for this chapter, I'm going to highlight on the Definition of taxation and borrowing, sources of taxes, and also sources of borrowing. So, sources of taxes and sources of borrowing are uh, two very important topics for you to understand. Yeah? And then, uh, this is well. So, definition of taxation is right. Okay. Taxation as imposition of compulsory levies on individuals or entities by government. Taxes are levied in almost every country of the world, primarily to raise revenue for government expenditures, although they serve other purposes as well. Yeah? So in general, taxation is defined as a compulsory charge. Remember the keyword, compulsory charge imposed by the state or public authority in respect of which no specific service to the individual is rendered in return. Okay? How about the sources of taxation? Okay, so this is the source of or classification of revenue. Okay. First one, non-tax revenue. Second, tax revenue. Non-revenue receipts and revenue from federal territories. So I hope you guys um, reread it back. Meanwhile, for borrowing. long-term debt instrument through which money is raised by the central and state governments, public sector organizations, and local self-institutions to finance various projects undertaken by them. Yeah? So uh, this is uh, according to Mishra. According to Shari and Jomo, total debt of central government either from internal or external sources. Okay. So a uh, borrowing is actually a debt, a debt of central government. Yeah? And then the debt is either from internal or external resources. Yeah? Skip it. Then sources of borrowing, internal and also external borrowing. So internal borrowing, you can get it from treasury bills, government bond and security, public financial institution. 
than um, private financial institutions, there are this is the continuous um, chart for the previous one. So for uh, for external borrowing, it consists of bilateral loans and also international development financial institution. Yeah? It has a negative and also positive values of borrowing. Chapter 4 or Chapter 4 is for public expenditure. So this is the first chapter. Chapter 4 is the missions, chapter 4 is the reasons for public expenditure, principles, classification of public expenditure, Malaysia, and also the budgetary process related to public expenditure in Malaysia. So from this uh, syllabus, um, please, please highlight the definition itself the classification of public expenditure in Malaysia and also the budgetary process in Malaysia. So classification of public expenditure or public spending you already know now. Yeah? These two. Okay. So for expenditure there are two types of expenditure. The first one is operating or management expenditure. Uh, it, it, relate, it is related to daily Development expenditure. It is a capital expenditure which is not repeated after this long term. Okay, you already know the examples for operating expenditure in such salary, rent, insurance, um, fees for maintaining, maintenance, and also uh, a lot of things that is related to regularly, daily. Okay. Budgetary process related to expenditure and Malaysia. The first one, the formulation of the budget itself. Yeah? This involves collecting, classifying, analyzing, and recording the data. It is initiated by the, the, the department itself. Yeah? And then, the second one is budget approval. Okay, After you formulate the budget, you need to get it to be approved. So this is the most important step in the budget process where the budget prepared by the executive must get the approval of parliament yeah? And then the, the third step is budget implementation. So after the budget get approved, um, it has to be the implementation process next. Okay? After parliament has authorized the budget in the form of an act, expenditure authority is then made available enabling the administration to make expenditures and to incur obligations. And then the next one, after everything is done with the implementation and everything accounting, so budget auditing takes place here. Yeah? This is the final stage in the budget cycle where a comparison is made of budget estimates with actual expenditure. So don't forget these four stages of budget process in Malaysia that is related to the spending of Malaysian government or expenditure. Yeah? Alright, class, next one, which is chapter 5 or topic 5, is about public procurement. So this is the syllabus content, the objectives of public procurement, policies and procedures of public procurement, government procurement, procedures and procurement, methods of public procurement, role of federal procurement board, and also government assets management. Disposal related to policies and procedures in asset management and asset disposal. So, in this chapter, I think um, I'll just um, slightly highlight the methods of public procurement and also the definition itself. Yeah? Okay, so, the definition of public procurement. Okay. Public procurement can be defined as the purchasing of goods and services for public purposes. It is a support function meant to make available supplies, equipment, and other materials when required. The purpose of procurement in the public sector is to enable government agencies providing various services and necessary goods to the people. The central objective of procurement is to obtain material and supplies of the right quality in the right quantity at the right time from the right supplier and the right price. 
So in general, public procurement is the process yeah, of purchasing goods and services for the government. Yeah? As simple as that. And then the methods of public procurement, which is very important. Yeah? First one is through casual or direct purchase. It is for less than fifty thousand ringgit. By quotation, more than uh, more than twenty thousand, up to five hundred thousand ringgit. By tender, by emergency purchase, and also foreign purchase. So there are five methods of public procurement. Yeah? So for casual or direct purchase, uh, examples are for stationery and office equipment. Tender. So this is the process of tender. I mean the types of tender. Okay, open tender, selective tender, negotiated tender, and also single stage and two stage tender. Emergency purchase. of accounting, principles of public accounting, types of public accounting, management of trust and deposit accounts, accounting system structures and also role of the account, general or AG. Yeah? So for accounting, we'll be looking slightly at the definition of it, plus the importance, types of uh, public accounting, which, uh, which are three types, yeah? three types of public accounting, and then accounting system structure. Okay, the definition. Okay, so the term accounting is used to describe the process of assembling, analyzing, classifying, and also recording data that is relevant to transactions and events affecting the government's finances. Yeah, this is according to Michael Genito in 2013. Okay. Accounting is also a process of recording of financial transactions along with storing, sorting, retrieving, summarizing, and presenting the results in various reports and analysis. Okay, this is according to Harold Everkamp in 2019. Okay. One part of accounting focuses on presenting the financial information in the form of general purpose financial statements, uh, in such balance sheet and income statement. Okay that are distributed to people outside of the company. These external reports must be prepared in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Yeah. Another part of accounting focuses on providing a government's management with the information needed to keep the economy financially healthy. Although some of the information comes from recorded transactions, many of the analysis and reports include estimated and projected amounts based on various assumptions. A few examples of this information are budgets, standards for controlling operations, and estimating selling prices when quoting prices for new work. So, importance of accounting it is to plan budget for banks and lenders and also keep records. Yeah? And then, as a tool for decision making, information to investors, reporting tools, and also managing and monitoring cash flow. Okay, next one, accounting system structure. Where is the structure? Right, this is the structure, okay? So we have two types of structures, set and also and set, yeah? Set refers to self-accounting system department and and set refers to non-self-accounting system department. So what are the differences? Okay, so what are the differences? What are the differences over here? 
So the amounts entrusted to them by the treasury, this is under Sanya. They are provided with banking facilities and the receipts and payments are made to their bank account. Where all ministries and departments send their vouchers to the treasury for examination and payment, some big ministries are given given the autonomy for examination and payment at their level. All the vouchers of a self-accounting department are kept as its custody. Self-accounting departments will also have to maintain their own cash books and prepare bank reconciliation statements. Yeah? For NSAID, non-autonomy in payment or allocation of expenditures. Accounting managed by the treasury. All payment made via the treasury. So this is not that strict and quite good set. Yeah? is about public accounting. So, this earlier for accounting. The next step should be auditing. Okay, so the syllabus content, definition and objectives of auditing, categories of audit, types of audit, role of the Auditor General, annual report of the Auditor General, role of public account committee, and also Audit Act in 1957. So uh, the main topics or the topics that you need to highlight here is the definition itself of course, the categories of audit and also types of audit. Yeah? Let's move on to the definition first. Okay. So audit serves an accountability relationship with independent object assessment the fairness of management's representations and performance or the assessment of management's systems and practices against criteria reported to a governing body or others with similar responsibilities. Auditing involves evaluation and verification processes performed by a competent and qualified individual to ensure the validity and reliability of information in certain organizations' activities and are accordance with established standards and procedures here. Yeah? Audit also mainly associated with the evaluation and verification of financial systems and reports. So, uh, it's a summary. Audit is all about the assessment or evaluation of an activity mostly government yeah? or the spending. Let's move on to the types of audit. Okay, so there are three types of audit here. Please remember this one. Financial audit, compliance audit, and also performance audit. Okay, let's take a look at financial audit very fast. Okay, this is also known as attestation audit. It is aimed to determine the true and fair view of annual financial statement and to ensure the extent of compliance with all accounting and auditing standards, rules, and regulations. It involves obtaining and evaluating the evidence of financial reports, hence examining the reliability and integrity of the financial and operating information. Yeah? This cost audit is done on an annual basis. Generally, financial audits include the practice in determining whether, number one, Financial info is presented in accordance to reporting framework. Number two, specific financial regulations have been adhered. And number three, the internal control structure related to financial reporting and matters have been designed and implemented accordingly. That is financial audit. How about compliance audit? It represents the audit examination pertaining to the inspection and evaluation of the activities of ministries departments or other public sector organization work. Meanwhile, the performance audit, we all know from the name itself, it is an independent assessment or examination of the extent to which an activity, program or public institution operates efficiently and effectively with due regard to economy. So what are the performance of the activities here? Yeah? So this is the purpose of the audit. Okay. We move for categories. So there are two categories of 
topic of internal one and also external one. Internal audit, the power and responsibilities are under the administration of the head of the individual government organization. Meanwhile, for external audit, the function is performed by the National Audit Department or NAD in which the power, authority and responsibilities of the Auditor General are specifically vested in the Article 106 and 107 of Federal Constitution and Audit Act in 1987. Okay, next one, topic A or chapter A, which is Federal State Financial Relations Act. So this is the syllabus content, distribution of revenue between the federal and state governments, federal grants to the states, borrowing powers of the states, role of the national banks, and also analysis of federal state financial relations. Okay? So for this chapter, I think the most important part is the issues related to state financial relations. gap between the state's own revenue and expenditure ranges, escalating management expenditures, increase of debts of states, okay, this is one of the most important part of analysis of federal state financial relations, yeah, so the increase of debts of states uh, give an impact to the relation between federal and state, yeah, areas of revenue, state's financial condi condition, okay, again, yeah, States limited foreign powers and also political factors. Alright, class, we have come to the last topic or last chapter of the ADP subcommittee of course. The entitled Financial Control and Accountability Act. So, this is the series of Definition of financial control and accountability. Objectives of accountability. What is exactly the objective? Principles of effective accountability, types of accountability, mechanism for enhancing control and accountability, and also internal and also external control. Yeah? So, for chapter 9, the most important part is the definition in itself, of course, budgetary control definition and also accountability definition. Types of budgetary control, we have seven types of revenue and also uh, types of Let's take a look at the definition of financial control first and accountability after that, yeah? So, financial control is also known as budgetary control. Okay, it is, um, it is the establishment of a budgeting system to formulate financial action plans for the operations and the system to direct such finances to achieve the desired actions specified in the budget. It's a control technique whereby actual results are compared with budgets. It is also a process that undertaken throughout the budget period where budget and targets are continuously examined for review or adjustment depending on the performance. So budgetary control is actually a, a follow-up or a check-up from time to time on the activity that is being implemented by the government. It is a process of following up or checking up of the government's activity from time to time. And then types of budgetary control, uh, we have seven. Fund control, revenue control, expenditure control, payment or disbursement, cash control, cost control, salary or payroll. Accountability, it is defined as implied a literal accounting or reporting function or implied explanation or justification of actions. Accountability is actually refers to the institutionalized relationship between two parties, the accountant and also accounting. It involves the giving and rendering of an account which is provided a statement explaining one's conduct or actions. Accountability is actually the responsibility responsibility imposed to one person yeah so that means he or she has to know what she is in charge of okay the roles of 
ask someone in terms of in kind or literal or something like that. And then types of accountability have to financial accountability, management accountability, and also program accountability. So financial needs, the responsibility in terms of financial activities. Management accountability, the responsible um, in terms of management activities and also program accountability, the responsible in terms of program management. Okay. So I think that's all you guys. So I don't have anything to say anymore. I just wanted to say that good luck and the final exam yeah. And okay. Please stay safe, yeah?